Everybody stand, please. Division one of the police court of the city of Los Angeles is now in session. Honorable Robert Webster presiding. People versus Phyllis Green. Step forward when you're called. Step right up here. Phyllis Green. You're charged with being a vagrant, of walking the streets. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Have you anything to say before court passes judgment? I was hungry. It's a sad condition of affairs in this day and age that a young girl has to take to the streets to avoid starvation. Fifteen days in the county jail. Sentence suspended. Thank you, sir. The People versus George U.S. Jones. Yeah, yeah, but that's me, Judge. I was George U.S. Jones, all right. But that woman done lied on me. <laughs> Silence. Uh, what does the U.S. stand for, George? Well, I don't know just what it do stand for, Judge. Except that I was named for J Big General, and, and I resume that that's the United States. Well, George United States Jones, you are charged with being a peeping Tom and molesting one Lizzie Turner. Guilty or not guilty? No, sir. I, I ain't molest Lizzie in months, and that's just the trouble now. Uh, every time I stop molesting that woman for a little while, she held me arrested. Well, uh, <clears throat> you uh, uh, just tell the court how it happened. Well, well, I was peeping in the window to see if Lizzie had any company, and that time she come up behind me and started hitting me with a stick. And so I grabbed a stick and swatted the one. That's all that happened. Yeah. You, uh, you were peeping in Lizzie's window, and you swatted the one. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I swallowed the one, but I didn't molest her. Well, um, how many times did you uh, peek, George? Oh, about four times, Judge. Five dollars a peek, ten dollars a swat. Thirty days or thirty dollars? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. The People versus Nathaniel Barry. You are charged with being an habitual drunkard. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty, Your Honor. Nathaniel Barry, I lack words to express my disappointment with you. You have fallen from a pinnacle of fame and fortune to a drunken wreck. Why, only a short time ago you were universally lauded and, in my opinion, rightfully so as one of the greatest living actors of the stage and screen. You had millions of admirers, of which this court was an ardent member. The face of Nathaniel Barry was a face that was known and loved the world over. 
Yours was an achievement, an art that gladdened the world and made it a more beautiful place to live in. You have failed. You have robbed yourself of your high place in your profession. And I am convinced that the only hope for you is a long sentence during which your enforced abstinence may enable you to find yourself. So, with that hope, I am about to sentence you. You can't come in here, son. But I must speak to the judge quick. I know, but court sensation now. Just sit down back there somewhere. You may let him come in. Thank you, sir. Gina, you all right? I'm awful sorry to bother you like this, Judge. You see, I had to find my dad. You mustn't send Matt to jail. He's got a job this morning at the studio. I got it for him last night. Judge, they just gotta have Nat to play that part. Nobody in the world can play it like, like he can. Please, Judge Bob, won't you let us off justice once more? You're a fine boy, Junior. Thank you, sir. I'm letting you take your father with you, but this is the last time. If he fails us again, this court will be compelled by a sense of duty to do two things that will hurt you very much. That won't fail us, sir. Will you, Nat? No, son. I won't fail you again. I know that you mean it. And I hope that you have the moral courage to keep it up. But if you forget your promise, the court will see that your son is removed from your custody and that you will go to the county jail for as long as the law will permit. That'll be good, sir. I promise. Mr. Hearn, as the probation officer of this court, it'll be your duty to keep strict surveillance in this case and to report back to this court at least twice a week for three months. Yes, Your Honor. I'm giving you your freedom, but under a suspended sentence of six months' imprisonment, depending upon your good behavior. Gee, Judge Bob. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Hungry, Nat? No, son. I saw more papers than any kid on the street last night. And you knew where to find me. Oh, it wasn't that, man. I just thought maybe. Well, you know. <laughs> That's what you need. Come on in here. Oh, I'm all right, Junior. Just the same, you're going to take a little nap while I fix you up. <laughs> hey, give me a coat. Oh, Junior, I tell you, I'm quite all right. I know better. Lie down. We gotta be at the studio in an hour. We're playing the part of a minister. Gotta marry somebody. And will we show him? Well, we'll try. We'll catch up on a little sleep now. All right. Hey, Skid, stop that barking. Come on, snap out of it. Never rake an artist like that. Our natures are too sensitive. You look like an artist. Where's your pajamas? They wore out. Well, come on. Let's nap into it. We gotta get Nat to the studio for a nine o'clock call. Where is he? In there, asleep. Oh.
Here, give me those. Before she reads the letter, there's a negative scratch, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Phil, tell those added scenes the scenario department sent over. Hmm. What about Nat Barry? He's on his way. Good. Now, morning, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Joe, was Miss McCormick called 10 30? Why, yes, sir. I had my own particular reason for coming so early. Nat? Well, everybody loves Nat. <laughs> yes, everybody. Well, 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 hello there. How hello, are you? Nat. Hello. Glad to be with you again, Harry. Glad to have you, Nat. How are you feeling? Fine. Never better. Don't Nat make a great minister, Mr. Fields? You bet he does, Junior. <laughs> be with you in a minute, Nat. Let's go be in sit down. <laughs> tell me all about yourself, Nat. Well, there isn't much to tell. Everything's fine. Oh, it's grand to have you here with us again. Oh, it's fine to be playing in one of your pictures again. I'm beginning to understand why I was given the part. Have you forgotten I played my first part in your picture? But you've made wonderful progress since then. We were terribly in love then, weren't we? Yes, terribly. Jack, how's this for you now? Jack! Jack! Okay. All right. Go over to the hospital. Everybody in their places. Places. Excuse me. Well, Got your book? All right there, Mr. Barry. We'll start off with you marrying this couple. Now, you read down till I tell you to stop, because I cut away to something else, and when I come back to you, you're just pronouncing a man and wife. Understand? Mm -hmm. Well, we we'll try it. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. God saw it was not good for man to live alone, even in paradise. Therefore, he formed for him woman. That's far enough. We'll do it. Now, this is the picture, folks. Stand by. Everybody set. On your toes, everybody. You all set, folks? All right. All right. Everything's cooking. Quiet, please. Come on. On the way. Sit down. Come on. All right, Nat. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and... <coughs> cut! 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. We'll do it again. I'll try and take it a little easier this time, Matt. Turn them over. Mike! Ready? Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. If there be anyone 
Here. Cut. Knows any reason why? Cut. Cut. I'm sorry. Harry. <laughs> had a bite of breakfast. Diana, forgive me. I'm sorry. Take care of yourself, man. We'll switch over to Mr. McCormick, Sampras. You'll get those people. Oh, right. 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 I failed you again, miserably. Judge Webster was right. He should take you away from me. Oh, you couldn't help it, Matt. You were just sick. Oh, forget it. What's one old wedding, anyhow? Just wait till that big part comes up at marriage pictures. Things look mighty good for us to get it, too. When we do, we'll show them, won't we? What are you saying, Matt? We'll try. Atta boy. You have just seen the two little princes perform. But that is only the beginning of what's in store for you. You are about to witness a miracle. And the beauty of it is, it can't cost you a thin dime. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the greatest works of the greatest artists. And what you are about to witness will mystify you. Absolutely. ready for you out there. See that you don't fall flat again. You see, people uh, don't want to just see a face, they want action. 
Do you know that uh, spiel that Lincoln gave, uh, you know, at a battlefield? You mean his Gettysburg Address? Yeah, that's it. Do you know it? Yes. All right, give it to him. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. What do you mean you can't? You say you know it. I don't think you'd understand. Say, just what do you mean by that crap? I refuse to drag the Gettysburg speech into this mire. Oh, that's it, is it? Hey, listen. You like to eat, don't you? You were hungry when you came here, weren't you? You and your brat boat. Hello, Mr. Weaver. Well, Matt, do we eat after the next show? Yes, son. Of course. Gee, that's great. You know, I'm getting kind of hungry. How about you? All right, very soon now. This is a picture of the noble features of the great emancipation. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see the original of this painting brought to you in the flesh, introducing Mr. Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Isn't he great? There's only one that bad, Virginia. How are things going? Fine. Matt hasn't touched a drop in weeks. Tell him to keep up the good work. You know what the judge said. Oh, don't worry about Matt. He's on the wagon for keeps. Be seeing you. So long. I want you to pay close attention while I tell you of another great liberator. This time it comes to you in the form of a liquid. A liquid <laughs> that is absolutely guaranteed to banish liver trouble, heartburn, chap hands, all aches and pains that you may have caused by internal disturbances. How's the appetite, Matt? Oh, excuse me, General. I didn't know to uh, ask what kind of sandwiches you wanted for dinner. Chicken sandwiches, orderly. Yes, sir. How many, sir? Two for you, one for me. Yes, sir, General. I'll be back in a jiffy, Matt. <laughs> Pain flies away with the first spoonful. With the second, you feel the revivifying fire of youth. Remember, you have only one life to live. Who will be the next? to give yourself this magical remedy and see the world through... Come on, break it up. Let's go now. Come on, everybody. Come on, now. Oh, say, what's the idea? Your show's closed. Well, what's the matter? Just a little matter of selling brown sugar and water for medicine. Is that right? Who's running this outfit? Not me. Shall we lock it up? Oh, no, stick around a little while. Well, it's all over. We're out of a job. What's the matter? It appears we've been imposed upon. Mr. Weaver has had us selling brown sugar and water to the public at a buck a throw. And the cops just put on the lid. You know, I took some of this stuff last night and it seemed to help me. Well, maybe that's what they call psychology. Say. I'd better find Weaver before the cops do and get our dough. Don't forget the cops. Fifty cents. Thanks. There's plenty of chicken in them, isn't there? Didn't order turkey, did you? <laughs>
Where's Nat? Isn't he in there? No, nobody's in there. What happened? Well, the door was locked up. And it hit Nat pretty hard. Skid, we gotta find him and find him quick. Listen, you go that way and I'll go this way. Look everywhere. Is my dad in there? Yeah, and with all the trimming. Atta boy, that old boy. Oh, excuse me, General. Your carriage is waiting. Ready, orderly. Ready. But I just got to see Mr. Furman. It's about my dad. Oh, Mr. Furman knows him well. He used to be a star here. I'm sorry. Mr. Furman is busy. Do you think he'd mind it if he just announced me? I'm sorry. Oh, good morning, good morning. Mr. Carmen. Hello, Junior. What are you trying to do, crash the gate? I want to see Mr. Furman about Nat. But I'm not having much luck. And maybe I can help you. Gee, that'd be swell. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. How are you? Fine. <laughs> hello, Diana. What can I do for you? Sit down, sit down. This is Junior Barry. He wants to talk to you about something very important. How do you do, sir? Oh, hey, you're Nat Barry's son, are you? Yes, sir. And I came to see you about him, sir. Nat hasn't touched a thing in over five weeks. And he's simply got to have another chance, Mr. Furman. I'm sorry, my lad. I wish I could do something for your father. But I can't. Oh, give him another chance. He made a lot of money for you at one time, and he might easily do it again. I won't do it. I can't. Nat is the best actor I know, but he's made it impossible for me to do anything for him. That's final. Oh, I'm sorry, Junior. I'm afraid it's no use. Everybody's turned against Nat. Nobody's willing to give him another chance. And that's all he needs, a chance. We've been to every studio in Hollywood, and nobody believed Nat's quit drinking, but I tell you, he has. The trouble with you is you're not human. That's what you're not. You think of a fellow slips once, you got to keep on kicking at him. You think he's not good enough for you. That's it. Not good enough for you. What if he did used to drink? 
Everybody does it sometime, don't they? You've been drunk, haven't you? Sure you have. You're just little and mean, and I hate you. Listen, Sonny. I may not be able to do anything for your father right now, but I can do something for you. Well, I've been looking all over for a boy to play in father and son. He's a chip of the old block. Well, there he is. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, you want to give me a chance to be a great actor like Matt? I mean just that. Gee, i got to go right home and tell Matt. Excuse me. <laughs> you watch that kid grow. I know how to pick him. <laughs> You're a positive genius. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm going, to, yeah, I'm going to see the rushes. You'd like to come along with oh, me? I'd love to. You know. yeah. That cameraman the other day, again. It's simple. Black bug blood. Black bug blood. No, you see, no, I, I, I can't. <laughs> Did you say black bug blood? No, my friend means black bug blood. Black bug blood. Police department calling car number 39. Car number 39. Police department calling car number 39. Car number 39 at 208 at 208 Field Street. A drunken fight. Bring them in, boys. Lindquist. Oh, 
Well, what do we got here? A load of drunk. <laughs> all right, all right. Black blood. Take him in. Blood. Hot diggity. Nat, Nat, I said her. Did you hear me say her? Hot blood, blood. The back, brush. Did you hear me? Sorry, kid. Don't know. I'm going to get away. Well, listen, I got to work tomorrow. That's... You worked in Sayers, didn't you? Yes. I said it. <laughs> I said it. Very good. Very good. Black bug, bug. I speak to my dad for just a minute. Make it snappy. Thank you. Matt? You know, the funny thing is, a fella can only say a thing like that once. Matt? I got a job today at the studio. You know, you know what Mr. Furman said? He said I was a chip off the old block. It's a story called Father and Son. And I'm gonna make him let you play my father in the picture. Won't that be great, Nat? That would be wonderful, Junior. judgment of this court that you, Nathaniel Barry, be imprisoned in the county jail for six months without the alternative of a fine. At the solicitation of Miss McComb, I have arranged with the proper juvenile authorities to award the custody of your son, Nathaniel Barry, Jr., to her. Diana, thanks for everything. Goodbye, Nat, and bless you. I'll be dropping in and seeing you once in a while, Matt. Just don't let me bring a razor in there, huh? I'll give you one of those good old shaves. That's a go. Don't forget, son. I won't. Bye, Matt. Bye. The People versus John Fernandez. Yes, sir. Fernandez? Yes, sir. You are charged with being a suspicious character without any visible means of support. Junior tried to outrun me. Yeah, and I did it, too. Oh, I bet I can beat you to the pool. You're on. I'll get you there. Come on, hurry up, slowpoke. Yeah, I think you got there. Oh, you think yeah, you are? Yeah, I will. Right. Here I go. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, oh you roughy. It's, oh, it's boy. freezing today. Oh, is it? Oh, <laughs> now I'm going to up oh. my life. Boy, Bobby. Three lumps, as I remember. Right. I think you can take Junior's plate. He's eaten practically everything. <laughs> I'd give anything for your appetite. No, you wouldn't. You'd get fat. <laughs> <laughs> you win. I wonder what Nat's having this morning for breakfast. 
Oh, I wouldn't worry, dear. I'm sure they're taking very good care of him. He didn't look so good yesterday. He seemed kind of pale. I thought he looked exceptionally well. No, he didn't. I can tell when that's wrong inside. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Steele. Oh. Seem to be up before breakfast. Want a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I've just had mine. Uh -huh. I want to give Junior a little lift to the studio. We'll have a little chat on the way, Junior. Oh, I'd be with you in a minute, Mr. Fields. Excuse me. Right. Do you know, Diana, I'm worried about the kid. The last two days have been practically wasted. Is it really as bad as all that, Harry? I'm afraid it is. When we started the picture, he was simply great. But the last few days, he seems to have lost himself. What can you expect? Junior's not himself without Matt. They're entirely lost without each other. And besides, he did so want his real father to play the part of his father in the picture. And all these things combined and naturally upset him. I can understand that. All set, Junior? Ready when you are. So long, Di. Goodbye, darling, and good luck to you. Thanks. See you at the studio, darling. Hop in there, young fellow. We're off. Okay. How about those lines of yours, you know? Okay, I do every one of them. I think so, anyway. Do me a favor, will you? Don't let my boy know about this. It's really nothing, only a nervous spell, but I don't want him to worry. Okay, Nat, and good luck, boy. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'm out, sometimes I'm in. I feel just like I just began. Nobody knows. Hey, pipe down, will ya? Yeah, sir. Say. You look no sick. What you here for? <laughs> you know, every time I hear that old jail door slam, I guess me a stomach complaint. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, does they serve good chicken soup in this year hospital? <laughs> Look, Mr. Berg, your boy's picture is in the paper. Talking to me, you want to see it. Well, thanks, Heidi. Uh, he's a fine boy. 
Sure, why not? He's going to be a great actor someday. <laughs> Why don't you go to sleep? I can't sleep. Well, if I say a piece for you, will you? Yes. Which one shall I say? Owl and the Pussycat. All right. I'll say the Owl and the Pussycat. The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in, in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey, and, and, they, and then they took plenty of money, wrapped in a five pound note. The Owl, the, the owl looked up at the stars above and sang to a beautiful guitar. Cut. Sorry. Junior. Yes, sir. That's five times straight you've forgotten your line. What's the matter, son? Don't you feel well? I don't know. I guess I just can't be an actor. Oh, forget it. You run out and get some fresh air and I'll shoot something else. Everything's going to be fine. Mr. Peel, we can take the scene of the baby sleeping. That's a good idea. Diana, have you seen Junior? We've hunted all over the studio and he isn't here. He must run away. He's here. Yes, I know. We have something else to shoot this afternoon. I promise you I'll have him there in the morning. Well, thanks, Diana. Is there any delay? Is he home? No, the kid's a little upset, but I'll shoot something else. Be frank with me, Diana. What's wrong with my boy? You know, you were, you were Junior's idol. And I failed. I understand. <coughs> the real trouble is, his whole heart was set on your playing the father in the picture. Do you think it could be arranged, Diana? If it will help him, I must play that part. But you can't, Matt. You're too ill. Talk with Furman. Talk with Fields. When Judge Webster understands how important it is, I'm sure he'll grant a parole. I must play that part, Diana, for Junior's sake. It's an obligation I owe him. I've got to do it. We'll try, Matt. You're pretty badly shattered, Barry. I suppose you know that. Yes. Your leaving here to work in a picture this morning is utter insanity. It's imperative that you have absolute rest. Quiet. Any excitement may prove dangerous. Very dangerous. You understand? Yes, I understand, Doctor, and thank you. Your son and Miss McCormick are waiting for you. Goodbye, Mr. Barrett. I wish you luck, sir. Thank you, Snowflake. Yes, sir. I wish I was going, too. 
You're looking wonderfully well, Matt. Well, I'm feeling fine. Just wait till Matt finds out we're putting him in another jail. <laughs> another jail? Don't be alarmed on the set. Oh. Yeah, and they have a whole row of death cells and everything. You know, in the picture, you play my father, too. And I come to visit you before they hang you. But you really didn't commit the murder. Good. <laughs> well, that's fine. Just so I'm not a real murderer. Oh, nobody'd believe you were a murderer, even if the story did say so. <laughs> well, that reminds me. I brought the story along so you could read your part. Oh, that's thoughtful, son. You're getting to be a real picture man. Harry told me there are two more weeks of the picture, and you're in every single scene. There's the prison scene. Not every boy can boast of having Nat Barry in his first picture. Everything has been fine up to this point, but this scene misses. Remember, this is the last goodbye. You're to die within an hour. Now, let's try it again. All right. Try and forget all this, my son, and always be a good boy. I will, Dad. I'll try. I'll try, Dad. Time's up. Oh, you can't take me away. You can't make me go away. Oh, Daddy, please don't let him take me away. Oh, Daddy, please. My boy. Don't let the shadow of the gallows fall on his life. Let me die. Now. Now. I'm sorry, Nat, but it doesn't click. Yes, I know it, Harry. I'm sorry. You disappointed? Oh, no, Nat. We'll troop this time, won't we? Yeah, we'll try. You are sick, Nat. Shall we postpone it? No. We'd better take it now. All right, Nat. But try and remember the story. Remember, this is a death scene. Parker is saying goodbye to his son for the last time. He's scheduled to hang within the hour, but he doesn't hang. It's a case of death cheating the gallows. And when you see this boy disappearing down that corridor, it's the last straw. I understand, Harry. I'll give it to you this time. All right, Knight. This is the picture. All set? All set. Quiet, please. Turn them over. On their way. 398. All right, Matt. Go. Remember all I've told you. I will. I will, Daddy. Time's up. Oh, I don't want to go away. You can't make me go away. Oh, Daddy, don't let him take me away. Oh, Daddy, please. My boy. Don't let the shadow of the gallows fall on his life. Let me die now. Don't let the shadow of the gallows fall on my foot. My boy. Why should you suffer for this? My boy. My boy. My boy. My boy. My boy. Cut. That was fine, that. 
see that script. See that? That was great. Come on, get up now. What's the matter, Matt? Are you tired? Can't get over here. Get a doctor. Are you tired? In conclusion, friends of Radio Land, we have with us tonight young Junior Barry, who co-starred with his father, Nathaniel Barry, in the picture, and will now say a few words for himself. Here we are. Everybody at the studio thinks we have a fine picture. And all I can say is, it should be, because my dad played in it. That's good, Junior. Gee, Diane. I wish Nat was here tonight. Maybe he is, darling. 